Hello everybody and welcome to today's video where I'm going to be giving you a brief overview of what a DOTS project looks like in Unity. So if you came across this video then you're probably interested in Unity's new data oriented technology stack or ECS which is the Entity Component System. So in today's video I just wanted to give you a brief overview of what a project using DOTS and ECS kind of looks like and what are some of the components and windows and things that you are gonna be interacting with as you start to implement DOTS and ECS into your own Unity projects. Now, I know DOTS and ECS can seem pretty complicated and maybe a little bit overwhelming just because they're brand new and there's a whole bunch of big words in the documentation and it can kind of get confusing and you can get lost in that pretty easily. So instead of kind of just like going over some of the terminology or making a tutorial video on the basics of it, I just kind of wanted to show you what a project using dots looks like in Unity so you can start kind of training your mind to think about how you want to make projects in dots. So don't worry if things don't make complete sense right now. I am going to be going into much more detail about, you know, what are the individual components for dots and how to actually use them and implement them into your games. But again, today I just wanted to give you a quick overview, maybe go over some easy terminology, you know, show you some of the components that you'll be interacting with. And again, just to kind of get you familiar with using dots in ECS. And before I get into the video, I'd just like to say if you did find it helpful and you learned something, make sure you hit that like button. Also feel free to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss the videos that are going to be showing you how to actually use dots in ECS in your Unity projects. And of course, if there's anything confusing or anything specific that you want to learn related to dots in ECS, definitely let me know that in the comment section below. Also, if you do want to download the project files featured in this video, make sure you use the link down in the description below. So real quickly, what is the main advantage of using dots in ECS? You know, why are we going through all this trouble of learning a whole new programming paradigm if the way we have already works just fine? That's a great point. And you know, the reason that Unity says is it's performance by default. So performance optimization is really what you get with dots in ECS. So that not only means that you can make much more complex games, but you can make those more complex games for lower powered systems. You know, things like the Nintendo Switch, mobile phones, or even web browsers. And so I think that's where it's really exciting for me. So you can take, you know, simple games like this Pong game that I have playing behind me, and you could have this running just on a regular, you know, crappy old phone from a couple years ago and that would be no problem. However, using dots, you can do this and see no performance hit whatsoever. So now I'm gonna show you this little Pong project made with dots, and this project was actually made following an official Unity tutorial, which I'll link in the description below. I think it does give a pretty good introduction to dots if you're brand new to it, so I'd highly suggest following along with it if you are interested in kind of learning more about dots. So now the Unity editor doesn't look much different from just kind of the standard one. I am currently using the 2019.3.0 uh, version of Unity. And with this, you do need to still include some preview packages because dots and ECS are kind of in the preview phase right now. So at the top of Unity, if you just go up to Window and Package Manager, it'll go ahead and open up the Package Manager here. And then one thing that you wanna make sure to do is click on the Advanced button and make sure you check mark Show Preview Packages. And this is gonna bring up a whole bunch of preview packages and we just need to include three of them for using dots and ECS. So the first preview package we're gonna include is the Entities Package. And that's gonna allow us to use ECS and some mathematics and the job system and pretty much everything within dots that we need. However, we also need to include the hybrid renderer so we can actually render the dots objects within our scene. And then we're also gonna import the Unity Physics package and this is gonna allow us to take advantage of the new uh, Unity Physics. Now, the only other thing that we really need to set within our editor is we wanna have access to this entity debugger. So the way we do that is just go up to Window and then we'll go down to Analysis. And then from there, we'll select the Entity Debugger bugger and then so that'll just open up in a window and right now I just have it docked kind of down to the bottom and I can switch back and forth between just the regular console and the entity debugger and to be honest the easiest way to start messing with the entity component system is to just build kind of standard game objects and then we're going to convert them to entities so for example in this scene we have uh, the top wall the bottom wall and the two paddles so right now these are set up in our hierarchy just kind of as regular game objects as we normally would However, there are some slight differences. So you'll see that we have a box collider and rigid body on these wall components, which is pretty standard. Um, however, we also have this convert to entity component here. 
and the conversion mode is convert and destroy. So real quickly, let me just show you what happens when we go into play mode here. So you'll see that we do have everything currently set up in the scene hierarchy. However, when we actually do enter play mode, all that stuff goes away. I mean, it's still kind of showing up in the scene here and it's still obviously showing up in the game world, but because we have that convert to entity destroy, they're actually going to be converted to entities. So now we can actually see them in here. So you see these entities, we have uh, the bottom wall, the top wall, the, our two paddles here, and we have more entities um, for the, the little ball. So when it goes off the screen, you'll see that it goes away. So that's kind of how we can start to use the entity debugger here, is we can see that when things are converted from game objects, they're actually gonna go away from our scene hierarchy here and then we are going to be able to see them within the entity debugger. Now, one thing to point out is when we have these box collider and these rigid bodies on our game objects here, these actually don't stay as box colliders and rigid bodies when we convert them to entities. And then so I have the ball in the scene set up. Instead of having like a sphere collider and a rigid body, we have what's known as a physics body and a physics shape. So a physics body is essentially the new Unity version of a rigid body and the physics shape would be the equivalent of a collider. So back on the wall here, when we have this convert to entity, these box colliders and rigid bodies are going to be converted to physics shapes and physics bodies. So it's kind of nice that you can use either or. So now attached to the entities, we have things called components, which are essentially just containers for data. So in this case, on the paddles, we have an input data component. So this just kind of allows us to specify for player one, the W and S keys to move the paddle up and down. And then here we have another component for the movement data. So this is gonna allow us to basically control like the speed of how quickly our paddle can move and which direction we want it to go. So now these data components, they're literally just containers for data. They don't contain any logic. They don't control um, the paddle's movement or anything like that. They just hold the variables related to this entity. Now to kind of separate things out a little bit in the scripts folder, I actually have a subfolder for data components. And this just kind of has like all of our data data things in it. And then the other folder I have is systems. Now systems are where we actually control the logic for the different entities in our scene. Now you'll notice when you look at all the entities and all the you know game objects we've set up, these systems aren't attached to any of them. Uh, I do have this game manager, but this just kind of controls things about the UI. It doesn't control the entities at all. And so actually with these systems, we don't need to have them attached to any game object in the scene. And so we can actually use the entity debugger to see that our systems are actually working here. So if I hit the play button and go into play mode here, you'll see that right here, it shows all of our systems. So we can kind of scroll through and it shows um, there's a bunch of systems that Unity creates automatically, but there are a couple that I've created myself. There's this player input system. So just if I'm in the play mode here, I can scroll this guy. If I actually uncheck the player input system and go back here, I'm pushing the up and down arrow keys, but nothing, nothing is happening. It's completely frozen. However, if I check this system to re-enable it, then it comes back on. So that's just kind of another way that you can use the debugger um, to look at the systems that are currently active in your game. Now, real quickly, I'm just gonna briefly go over some code. I'm not gonna get too deep into it right now, but I do just wanna point out a few things. So this is an example of a data script right here. You'll see that we include the unity.entities library. And here we have this tag for generate authoring component. Basically what that allows us to do is this allows us to attach this data component to a game object in our scene that is going to be you know, converted to an entity later on. And this allows us to basically publicly control these direction and speed variables through the editor. So this, this basically just allows us to access these values right here. And then you'll notice that this inherits from the interface I component data, as opposed to something like mono behavior. Basically, this is just kind of what we need for these components. And it, it kind of limits us what we can do. We have to make this a struct and we can only use certain data types. But again, I'm not getting into all that right now. That's gonna be something coming in some of the later videos. So now this is a system and this is where things start to get a little bit more confusing but again I'm not getting too deep into it right now I just kind of wanted to point out a few things so this time we're going to be inheriting from the job component system class 
And one thing with that that we need is this protected override job handle on update. And this is much similar to the standard update function. It's gonna be called every single frame. And then so within this, we can kind of define the behavior that we want to happen for each frame. Now, one thing that we're gonna be seeing all the time is going to be these Lambda expressions. So we have this entities dot for each, and then kind of within here, we have some parameters, and then we do this arrow, then we have these brackets, and then we actually kind of define what we want to do inside here. Basically, what this is saying is for each component that has a translation component, as well as a paddle movement data component, we're going to be applying the following code to it. And so in the case of this project, the only things that have both translation components and paddle movement data components are of course going to be the player paddles. So then you'll notice that we have the ref and in keywords. Ref is a reference to this, which means we're going to be able to read from it as well as write to it. And because we're going to be, this script is going to be used to move the paddles, we want to take in the current data to see kind of where it's at right now. And then we want to be able to write new data to it so we can actually move the position to somewhere else on the screen. And then the in keyword is read only. So under this paddle movement data, we are going to want to read the speed and direction from the paddle movement data, but we don't necessarily need to change it or anything like that. And then the last thing that I wanted to point out is just this run keyword at the end. And so this run basically tags this to run on the main thread. And that's kind of where we start getting into the job system. But let me just show you on this script over here, this is where we're going to be increasing the velocity for the different balls on the screen. This time, instead of doing a dot run, I do a dot schedule. And a dot schedule means that we can schedule this to run on the worker thread. So instead of running it on the main thread, we can run it on separate threads. So we can kind of start doing multi-threading, which unlocks more and more performance out of our games because we can have things being calculated on different threads instead of the main thread. Again, don't feel overwhelmed right now. We're gonna be going into much more detail on what all this means later on. So anyways, as a brief overview, of what a DOS project looks like in Unity. I hope I didn't overwhelm you too much. Of course, if you do have any questions or anything like that, feel free to leave it in the comment section below so I kind of know what things that I really need to go over when I start making more videos on how to actually use DOS and what kind of some of these terminologies mean and how we can kind of start thinking about how to make our projects using DOS and ECS. And so if you did enjoy this video and you found it helpful, make sure you hit that like button. Also feel free to subscribe to the channel for lots more videos on DOS and ECS. And don't forget that you can download the project files featured in this video using the link down in the description below. But I hope you all have a fantastic rest of your day and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.